Good morning. My name is Pamela Pinnock and I'm a retired piano teacher. I spent probably 20 years of my life in arts administration, but I always maintain a studio in my home and loved particularly the students who very much were like the young lady that I'm going to read a story to you about this morning. This book also has a very special meaning to me because this little pianist was originally from Venezuela. My daughter is married to a Venezuelan and has many connections still with that country, even though it is in a lot of turmoil, just as it was during the time when this little girl lived. So this is one reason I chose this book to read to you today, and I hope you will enjoy Dancing Hands. So today I will be reading Dancing Hands, how Teresa Carano played the piano for President Lincoln. This book is written by Margarita Engel and is illustrated by Rafael Lopez. When Teresa was a little girl in Venezuela, Mama sang lullabies while Papa showed Teresita how to let her happy hands dance across all the beautiful dark and light keys of a piano. At first, making music seemed magical, but Teresa soon learned that playing a piano could be hard work. Sometimes she had to struggle to make the stubborn music behave as she practiced gentle songs that sounded like colorful birds singing in the dark and light branches of a shade dappled mango tree and powerful songs that roared like prowling jaguars beside towering waterfalls in a mysterious green jungle. If Teresa felt sad, music cheered her, and when she was happy, the piano helped her share bursts of joy. By the time she was six, she could write her own songs, and at seven, she performed in the peaceful chapel of a magnificent cathedral, playing hymns that shimmered like hummingbirds. Music was Teresita's delight, but suddenly, when she was eight, a war changed everything. Guns blazed, swords flashed, and poor Papa had to rush the whole family down to the seashore and onto a ship, into a storm where wind howled, waves rolled, barrels tumbled, ropes snapped, and clouds bucked and kicked across the wild sky like angry mules. By the time the ship arrived in New York, Teresa felt lost. She was homesick. How could she ever play happy songs again in this unfamiliar country where she did not know a single friend? Few people spoke Spanish, and all around her, curious strangers stared and whispered as if her whole family belonged in a museum of oddities. Worst of all, there was fighting here too, the horrible civil war north battling south as soldiers marched and newspaper boys hollered about victories, defeats, funerals, and fears. Without a new piano, Teresa would have felt even more lonely, but soon she discovered that whenever one is lonely, some people are friendly, drawn together by songs. Musicians came to her home, playing along while they listened to the dazzling notes of her dancing hands. Determined to improve, Teresa practiced graceful waltzes and sonatas, booming symphonies and lively folk songs, her strong hands accepting the challenge of life's many dark and light moods. People began to call her the piano girl. Her picture was in the newspaper and on posters advertising concerts where she performed with great orchestras that invited her to play solos. Teresa triumphed in enormous theaters where children clapped and cheered while their parents stood up and tossed roses. With Papa at her side, she traveled to elegant cities, and by the time she was 10, the piano girl grew so famous that she received amazing invitations, including one so special that she could hardly believe her eyes. President Abraham Lincoln wanted her to play for his whole family at the White House. 
But the country was still at war, so Teresa arrived in Washington, D.C. at a time when freed slaves were signing up to be soldiers. The injured moaned, and nurses groaned from the sheer weariness of caring for so many fevers and wounds. Not long ago, the president's young son had fallen sick and had died. Men argued about battles lost, battles won, speeches made, victory delayed. Teresa began to worry, how could music soothe so much trouble? Poor Abraham Lincoln. Teresa hoped she could entertain the president, his grieving wife, and their two surviving sons. Her fingers might stumble, the rhythms emerging too slow or too fast. But Teresa was brave and she believed in trying her best. So she entered the White House silently, clutching Papa's hand fiercely as they stepped into a room so red that it looked like a storm or a sunrise. Teresa remembered how it felt to be a homeless refugee and how lonely she had been surrounded by strangers, some of them rude and others kind. The memory of meeting past challenges now helped her fingers dance, celebrating the way life had turned out to be a mixture of all sorts of feelings, happy and sad. But the piano was poorly tuned, making her music sound ugly. What should she do? Refuse to play? She stopped feeling discouraged until Mr. Lincoln smiled kindly and asked for his favorite song, Listen to the Mockingbird. Teresa knew she could play this lively piece, even on an imperfect piano, so her fingers leaped across all the glorious dark and light keys, improvising the way mockingbirds do, the melody changing as she went along. Music swirled, twirled, and soared on wings of sound. The president listened quietly to notes that rose, swayed, rippled and dipped like a bird in a blue sky above a green forest. He closed his eyes, nodded his head, stretched his long fingers, and tapped the tips of his shiny shoes. When the joyful song ended, Abe Lincoln stood up and clapped, smiling at the piano girl who smiled too, because she knew that her music had brought comfort to a grieving family, at least for one brief, wonderful evening of dancing hands. From then on, Teresa felt certain she would always be bold enough to share her musical courage anywhere in the world simply by letting her fingers travel across all the beautiful, dark, and light moments of hope. As a footnote to Dancing Hands, I would like to tell you just a little bit about how she was also a very good composer. Once Teresa and her family arrived in New York, she studied piano with the African-American composer, pianist, and teacher. His name was Louis Moreau Gottschalk to uh, compose a tribute to him, she wrote an original composition called The God's Chalk Waltz. And I am actually uh, going to leave you with a little snippet of that, as well as some photos of her during her lifetime. This I pulled from YouTube, and all you have to do is you could do a search or Google her name, and you can find out a lot more about her life. She returned to Venezuela once because her countrymen disapproved of her, and, um, but eventually came back to the United States. She became known as a composer, an opera singer, as well as one of the best pianists of her era. She settled in Berlin, but returned to New York during World War I. 
Her remains, her concert gowns, her piano, and many of her documents were originally returned and eventually returned to Venezuela. She is remembered there as La Leona, the lioness of the piano. So I hope you have enjoyed this story today, and I also hope you will enjoy listening to the waltz that she wrote in tribute to Louis Marie Gottschalk, as well as some photos of her during her lifetime. Thank you, and I hope you have a great day, and if you're a little pianist, you keep practicing.